We're visiting with Don Fortney in his Gas City home today. And Don, you are a Korean veteran. Korean War veteran. And you had a lot to do with the F4U Corsair uh, in, in Korea yep. on the USS Princeton. That's correct. You were born in Marion. Right. 19 years old, you found yourself right. on the USS Princeton in Korea. How'd that all begin? When we graduated out of uh, boot camp in San Diego, uh, we saw the ship come in of when, when we were in about our eighth week or so, come cruising into North Island, and the drill instructor at that time said, boys, there, some of you, that's your new home. <laughs> and sure enough, that's where I ended up after I graduated, along with, uh, I don't know how many other hundred other people. Well, Don, uh, being 19 years old, that was... Uh... Uh, that was a long way f from Marion, Indiana. What was life like on that ship? Ah, uh, busy. Uh huh. Busy as can be. Never a dull moment. Uh, it was all a big learning curve for all of us. We'd never experienced anything like that before in our life. You take an airplane uh, the size of the F-4U, uh, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of seven ton, and you got 16 guys pushing it around on top of that dog on light deck, it's running up yeah. and down and floating side to side, up and down, front to back, and quite an experience. Do you remember, Don, roughly how many uh, airplanes would be on the ship, totally? Somewhere in the neighborhood of 100 planes. That's a lot. The F4U Corsair, uh, at the time, did you really realize what an incredible, beautiful airplane, as well as historical airplane it was? Yes, I did, because I used to draw pictures of it when I was a kid, when my older brothers and sisters was in in World War II. Uh -huh. So, yeah, that was a very unique plane. Nobody ever thought, possibly outside of the Germans, uh -huh. were the first ones to ever make a gullwing airplane. I see. Here we are 60 years later. <laughs> this is emotional for you, isn't it? It really is. It really is. You've made it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Don, I bet if a Corsair flew over right now today, you'd know it's a Corsair. Uh, they got a sound all around it. They do. They, you recognize them in the AD3s as, as well. They were they were all fast, fantastic airplanes. The, the two of the largest single engine airplanes that were ever built. Amazing. In in 1947, an airplane that would uh, do 470 mile an hour. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I mean, there was, big, you know, that, all that technology without computers and all, how how do we do that? Slide rules. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> slide rules. <laughs> you know, when you sent an airplane out on a mission, you weren't sure it's coming back. That's right. What was your feeling was, as when you saw that airplane returning? Oh, uh, to everyone was glad to see as many come back as they could. Mm -hmm. We we had them come back pretty well shot up, mangled and, and beat up. We've had uh, a blind pilot be talked in. With a, a wingman doing the guidance, mm -hmm. you take a rolling ship out in the middle of an ocean about the size of a postage stamp, what, what they claim to look like. Yeah. From, I don't know that. I yeah. haven't had that experience yeah. myself, but uh, to have something like that happen, it's just uh, it's amazing artwork when it's all said and done. The capabilities that those, those pilots had. Mm -hmm. And the sense, the sensitivity of, of trying to fly a plane when you're blind. Right. That would be something else. Typically, how many F4Us would you launch in a oh, typical mission? Well, 70-some planes, roughly, or more. Don, when you were out there in that ship, did you really love it? Did you really enjoy it? Well, yes. million-dollar experience for a kid from a small town in... Mm -hmm. Indiana to be put on a flight deck 888 foot long and 110 foot wide. Yes. <laughs> uh, bouncing up and down. Getting water in your face every now and then. What was the food like on that ship? Uh, we had, Airedales had great food. Mm -hmm. And especially if we had night flights. We'd get uh, steak and eggs about what? 1 o'clock in the morning. Oh, and uh, that's kind of hard to beat. 17, 18 hour a day all, mm -hmm. all together, just about any, any time back in that era. So it's a long day out it's there. It's a long day. Yeah. Uh, when you were away from home, out out on the ship or in the, did you ever run into any uh, any old friends from Marion, Indiana? Uh, not aboard ship. Uh, after I 
done the second tour and transferred to the air station in Japan. Uh, I had a couple uh, friends that ran into two brothers that uh, were in Hokkaido up in the northern part of Japan, uh, Russell and Corwin Scott, and uh, they came down and stayed with me a week, and also Pat Klein. All for Marion. All, all for Marion, 10,000 miles from home. We were so far west, we were in the Far East together. Your uh, total time in the Navy, Don, how long were you in? I got out 60 days ahead of time for having served overseas and uh, being in occupation forces. So three years, nine months, and 28 days. <laughs> <laughs> and here, here we are 60 years later. Six, you still remember that, don't uh, you? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Isn't it amazing, Don? Uh, four years of your life, uh, it made an incredible impression as a 19-year-old, didn't it? It did. It did. It's a wonderment when it's all said and done. Yeah, yeah. The many things that a fella goes through, uh, it's a wonder you're still kicking. Yeah.